Well, Canada is implementing a new immigration strategy that will see the number of newcomers level off in the next two years. And joining us live now with the details is Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Minister Mark Miller. So, Minister Miller, we have to start with this. You know, each year, thousands of people, they turn to Canada for a better life. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I look, Canada is one of the top destinations for people in the world, and I see that in my department where we've had record, record interest in coming to Canada, about 5 million uh, different documents processed this year. This is it's a huge strain on the system. I don't blame people for wanting to Canada, coming to Canada, because it's a country where people can grow, uh, but we need to make sure we're doing it in the right way. We've made a um, number of ambitious, or established a number of ambitious targets over the last few years as a government. Uh, but now what we're seeing is a need to, to stabilize the numbers and take a look at what the effects of that has been on the health system, on housing, um, and, on, and on integration. And I think while keeping those ambitious levels at a level that's at 500,000 for 2026, it made sense. While we take the time to look and, and see what, uh, what people are telling us. We certainly hear labor shortages uh, across Canada, and that's something that we need to sort of sharpen our pencils and... and, and, and and fix a little better in, in our system of who we welcome. We kind of kind of match, as you said, hope to the demand in the economy. And we got to get a little better at matching the supply with the economy, making sure that people with the skills actually are working in that particular profession that needs them, as opposed to a doctor coming here and driving a cab. It doesn't make sense. It's an economic failure in, in a sense. So um, that's something that we're looking at as a government. We can't do it alone. We need provinces and territories to work with us. Uh, but it's something I'm eager to do. I'm only three months in as the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, but uh, it's an interesting year coming ahead. And along those lines, just a couple of blocks from our studio, there are individuals who have come to Canada seeking a better life who are, are resigned to sleeping on the sidewalk. Yeah, and look, that's heartbreaking. Uh, I think this isn't something that is isolated to Canada, despite our, our favorable geography. All you have to do is look at what the reporting is coming out of Italy and parts of Europe about uh, you know, mass migration, people that are taking their lives into their hands, fleeing war, famine, other, uh, other tragedies. Uh, Canada's not immune to that, and that's what you're seeing a part of that on, uh, on the streets of Toronto. I saw that in the streets of Montreal when we had Roxham Road open. The question is, how do we do that as, uh, in a humanitarian and a humane way? Uh, that, you know, from a political perspective, needs we need to get our acts a little bit better together with provinces, with, with, with the city of Toronto, and making sure that the immediate challenge of getting a shelter over people's head for the winter is met, and then a longer-term strategy to make sure that we're dealing this in a way that Canadians expect us to deal with. And Minister, with all due respect, um, you know, housing, that's a big issue for people who are already in this country. Welcoming others to take a part of that when it's not even there. How does that work? Yeah, I think if the analysis was as easy as it sounds, uh, we would have found a solution a lot earlier. It's not a case that you get one person that comes into the country and then they autom automatically need a house. Uh, it depends on, you know, it, it depends on whether the person is, uh, brings capital, is buying a house, can help build it, or it's the actual person building the house. You know, what we've heard from the trades industries is we need 100,000 people in this country to build all the houses that we need to build by 2030. That will not be domestic labor that completely fills it. So fine-tuning our tools, as I mentioned earlier, making sure that people come in that have the trade skills, roofing, roofers, uh, welders, etc., is something that my department's focusing quite intensely on to make sure that we actually bring in those folks to build those housing. Sure, pressure comes from the not volumes that come in, but we can't sort of negate the other side of the question or the equation which forces us to look at labor that comes from abroad and skilled trades in order to actually build those houses. And Minister, before we wrap, we also have to talk about the social services offered by this great country, you know, and those who come here to seek that. Can the system handle that? And what's the plan? You know, that's a great generational question in broad macroeconomic brushstrokes that I face as a minister. When I was a kid, it was seven laborers to one retiree. It's getting to three to one. Uh, and close to two to one. If we don't have people to uh, come in and, and actually occupy those posts, all those demands in the health care services in housing will, not, will, will, will go unmet. You just need to walk into a hospital to see that a good percentage of the nurses and doctors are immigrants, new Canadians, um, and so too with, with pharmacists and dentists. So this isn't a problem that is going away, but it can only be done through good public policy that looks past certain political narratives and, 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 and political four-year strategies. We have to look at the next generation. Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Minister Mark Miller, thank you for your time. Thanks, Bakker. We really appreciate it.